I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. I've probably received more emails and calls from clients on the failure of SVB Bank than I did the stock market crash in April of 2020. So that tells me there's wide concern today about the stability of the economy and the financial markets. Which is kind of surprising because if you remember in 2020 we had a <clears throat> decline in the stock market of 38% I believe. And um, generally speaking, the economy is in much better shape today than that. So when you listen to the politicians and the pundits discuss the complexity of what went wrong, you can easily start to zone out. You can also start to project the whole banking system is in trouble. Well, let's kind of roll it back and look at the fundamentals here. Here's what basically happens with a bank failure. Banks make money by borrowing from customers in the form of short-term obligations. Now, those would be your checking accounts, savings accounts, and certificates of deposit. Then they take that money and they loan it on longer-term loans to borrowers. So when I borrow or they borrow a short-term loan, it normally carries a low interest rate, providing inexpensive funds that the bank can loan out at a higher rate. Typically, the longer the term of the loan, the higher the interest rate the borrow will, borrower will pay the bank. So suppose a bank loaned 100% of its short-term deposits out on long-term loans. If any holders of checking savings and CD accounts wanted to withdraw their money, the bank wouldn't have any available. They would have to wait for payments on those loans to come out, come in to have any type of slush fund to pay off a request. So to avoid this, bank regulators require that a bank must keep a certain percentage on hand to meet the normal day-to-day -day demands of their customers. And it's, I mean, I say the regulators require that. They require a minimum amount. A bank, of course, they're going to want to have some reserves on hand or they're going to have unhappy customers that can't get their money, right? So any bank will fail. Any bank will fail if all of the short-term depositors want their money all at once. This is known as a run on the bank. And this is what brought down SVB Signature and Credit Suisse. It could bring down even more banks if depositors panic. It isn't that the bank has no assets. When we talk about failing, it isn't that the bank has no assets, but the assets are tied up in loans, long-term loans, so that the bank's unable to access enough money to meet the demand for cash. Because the bank can't call up somebody they just made a 30-year loan to and say, hey, we need money, we're calling your, your loan. If a bank kept all of their deposits then in short-term investments, so 100% would be available to depositors, the bank would essentially be earning the same as it was paying customers on their short-term deposits. So it wouldn't make enough profit to exist. The key then for a bank is to balance the need to earn maximum profits through longer, higher interest rate loans, yet keeping enough in short-term loans to meet unanticipated spikes in their withdrawal needs of their customers. The more a bank keeps in short-term deposits and reserves on hand, right, the less they can pay their depositors in interest. Regulators, politicians are just now beginning to demand that the amount banks must keep in reserve be increased. The downside is lower interest rates for depositors. There's always unintended consequences to every bit of regulation and legislation doesn't mean it's bad, just means oftentimes there are consequences that we don't fully think through. Congress created something called the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, in 1933. 
it's funded through premiums paid by banks to insure the deposits of bank customers. And initially, that amount was $2,500. The current coverage cap is $250,000. So when a bank fails, when they have a run and they can't meet the demand for withdrawals, depositors are typically made whole within days. In addition, the FDIC can take over a failed lender and protect all deposits as it did with both SVB and Signature Bank. Uh, it's a good thing to remember that this insurance of $250,000 is per account. For example, a couple with separate individual accounts and a joint account can protect $750,000. A person can also have unlimited accounts at all the banks they need and have $250,000 coverage per account per bank. It's all insured. Now it's amazing to me how few people understand this. I've talked with two people this week who had over $1 million in a single local bank account. They were shocked to learn that only $250,000 of that was guaranteed. I actually had an account under $250,000 with Signature Bank, one of the banks that failed. I didn't panic. Within two or three days, the FDIC paid out my funds and I opened an account in another bank. As a bank customer, your best safeguard is to be sure you don't have more than $250,000 in any one account. If that's true for you, take a deep breath and relax. If it isn't true, then make it true. <laughs> okay, thanks for joining me.